Come on, Soda Pop. Let's go. Uh, again, welcome to tonight's meeting. We've got a, a really good crowd uh, and, and appreciate that. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to actually engage the council on any topic that you want involving your city. Uh, all we'd ask is come forward, state your name, uh, and then if you could keep your comments to five minutes or less, we'd appreciate that as well. But welcome. Uh, Scott Harrisman, Sioux Falls. Start out on a couple positive notes. Uh, my good friend Teresa Staley won the uh, Spirit of the Dakota Award on Saturday. Uh, there was 13 nominations, um, and uh, it was a great thing. Um, her nominating uh, talked about Snow Gates and Drake Springs Pool and her work with uh, being a piano teacher and helping a lot of people in the community, and it was it was wonderful. And um, Kermit told me that you guys are going to recognize her next Tuesday, so that's great. Uh, on another positive note, I watched the informational meeting, and I couldn't agree more with something uh, Kenny said about the uh, smoke detector program. I think it is money very well spent, and it is a great program. Uh, ironically, I tested all mine yesterday. <laughs> so when I watched this today, I thought that was pretty cool. And like Kenny said, if there's just one life saved because of it, it's, it's well worth its cost. So it's a great program. I hope they continue and keep doing it. I wanted to talk a little bit about my uh, visits to the event center. I um, went there for the Friday night grand opening, and I also went there for Joan Jett. Um, customer service was great. Uh, but I was a little disheartened by the fact that I paid with a debit card, and the bartender didn't give me the, the slip back to give him a tip, and I asked him about that, and he said, we're not allowed to. And I said, you know, he said, we're will we can accept tips, but we cannot write a, you can't write a tip on the, on the, on the slip. And then I talked to, that was the liquor bar. And then I talked to the beer tenders and they said they were not allowed to put out a jar. Same thing. They can take tips, but they're not allowed to encourage it. Um, and I said, well, why, why is this? And they said, well, management SMG told them that it was against uh, city rules, that it was a city, city, city rules that since it was a city owned building that they were not allowed to put a tip jar out now <laughs> i'm hard pressed to find a city ordinance that says you can't put a tip jar out tip jar out in a city owned building so i'm not sure who in smg told them this this but the thing that bothers me the most about it is we just spent a half a million dollars on workforce development and in a city owned building where we're contracted with a contractor to employ people and to work in the event center we, we can't encourage tipping them? It, it, it baffles my mind. And I don't know who to talk to about it or at SMG, but it seems kind of strange that we all this money and economic development that the event center is going to bring in, but we're not allowed to, to give a tip on a credit card slip at the, at the event center? I, I was very disheartened by that. So I'm here to say something about it as someone who's worked in hospitality on and off for over 20 years. Uh, people who work in hospitality get paid very low wages, hourly low wages. They very much de depend on gratuity, very much. It's state law. They can't, you know, they don't have to pay them more than $2 an hour, so two thirteen an hour. So I hope someone looks into this and makes sure that they can put those tip jars out and we can give them tips on their credit card slips. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Welcome. Good evening, Council Mayor. I L. Weiderman from Sioux Falls. <clears throat> uh, I find it ironic that uh, you have a proclamation this evening pertaining to uh, this job for disabilities, but yet you take the money away from paratransit. I find that just very disheartening. Uh, you'll find a few of us here in the stripes. That's because of solidarity um, on this uh, enforcement of certain items with the city. Uh, city uh, attorney is here representing the city um, at a trial where they brought criminal charges against a civil matter and thank heavens Joni Cutler, Judge Joni Cutler had them all dismissed, not guilty, except the one the city asked to have dismissed. Um, there's something coming up that I don't understand 
um, its building permits, doing away with building permits. That is just unheard of. Every city I, I've ever been in all over the United States has building permits, and now you have it on next week's agenda, I guess, to do away with them. Why? Thank you. <coughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Weiderman. Appreciate that. Um, did anybody else want to? Welcome. Nice to have you here. <laughs> thank you. Adam Buss, uh, Sioux Falls. I'd like to draw your attention to uh, ordinance that I was in violation of is 160.553, which is removing my truck from my residential property. And I think this, this is a zoning issue, of course, that I am currently going through. Um, I think that because it's my personal property, I shouldn't be hardshipped with having to find a parking area outside of a residence for my service or commercial vehicle. I guess... Uh, I was called in anonymously, and so I don't get to discuss that with the person. It probably wasn't even a neighbor. I've spoken with my neighbors about this issue, and that, that at least nobody's fessed up to, we don't like your truck here, which is okay. I mean, bring it to my attention. But it doesn't devalue any neighbor's properties. Nobody's gotten hurt. Zero fatalities from having my truck parked in my driveway. It's a third stall, and so it just sits on a cement pad. Along with that, the ordinance itself is a bit uh, wide, which it extends it to commercial and service vehicles. And I've gotten many different definitions from depending on who you speak with. There's not a particular definition out there, but the widest ones that I've gotten is anything that alters your vehicle to make it a commercial or service vehicle. So I want to draw your attention to that could be anything that you write off your commercial vehicle from. So you got to think about Frisbee's plumbers who put their ladder on their truck. Those people are in violation. Anybody that sells Mary Kay, your car's pink, you've altered it. You're in violation of this. At some point, the neighbor's going to call you in. And so I think that this speaks to a greater problem is that entrepreneurs have a tough time the way it is, like myself. And so having my truck on my, I, I can't afford 1200 bucks for a commercial parking space out on the edge of town where I have to go drive out and uh, use my truck when I can. So I think that should change uh, the enforcement part of it, just being having an anonymous person just come and just say, I don't, I don't like that. Well, you know, when have you ever had an anonymous tip, I guess, get you. That doesn't really work in the crime area. Along with that, um, you know, you could have use it as a bargaining chip against somebody to say, hey, I know you're sitting on your work truck there on your driveway, and if you don't come mow my lawn on Friday, I'm going to call you in. And so, I mean, there's any reason that somebody wants to say, I don't agree with this, I'm going to go ahead and call you in, and now you have to face this hardship of parking somewhere else, your work truck. Thank you. Adam, thank you very much. Appreciate you coming in. Thanks. Welcome. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, my concern is for drivers without insurance. Just uh, introduce yourself to the oh, people of Sioux Falls. Rick Albright from Sioux Falls. Thank you, Rick. Concern is drivers without insurance. Uh, in, the pa in the recent past, I've had four accidents, none of which were my fault. Three of them were hit and runs. Two of them had phony plates on the cars. Two and possibly three were without insurance and one individual provided phony insurance information to the police officer in that he did not have insurance but gave them a uh, policy number and an uh, organization. As a result, I've got the privilege of paying my deductible and hope that I can get it reimbursed. And after the second accident, most insurance companies will either raise your rates or wipe out any discounts, even though none of those accidents were my fault. Uh, I would encourage the council, in conjunction with the police department, to conduct an unannounced month-long spot check for just licenses and proof of insurance. And that violators then have their individual photos and the violations posted in the local newspaper because an announcement itself saying that this is going to be conducted will not deter anyone. However, humiliation may deter second-time offenders. Thank you. And thank you, Rick. Appreciate that. Folks, did anybody else want to engage the council? Welcome. Robert Colby, Mr. Mayor, Council. Now that the budgets for the city and the county have to, if they haven't already been submitted, they will be shortly. And sometimes it's 
uh, good to go and recap some of the things that we have to deal with in both those entities. Where would the city be without property tax? Good question. Now, I, the county, as you are well aware, they get property tax at the same rate, that the, about the same rate that the city does. 50% of the county's budget is property tax money. The unfortunate thing is 51% of the county's budget is law enforcement. So all of the rest of the budget for the county has to come from uh, state and federal monies and uh, fees and services that they charge. Now, that's outside money. I know the city gets outside money besides the property tax also. Sales tax has been something that has made the city what it is today. But with law enforcement, you must remember that the county is the state's law enforcement arm. The state has really very small law enforcement. They have DCI and they have the highway patrol, but they really don't have a law enforcement arm. That's the county sheriff and all of that goes with that. And 80% of all the problems that the county has to deal with as far as law enforcement and also the city come from either alcohol or drugs. Now the city says, well, we don't get any of the money from alcohol. Well, let me give you a little brief background. The feds get their money from the point of origin. They get their tax money. The state gets money pre-sale. The state gets four cents for every dollar of sale of alcoholic beverages, and the city gets its two cents on sales tax. So you do get a benefit from sales tax as per alcohol, but what does the county get? The county gets to arrest, they get to defend, they get to prosecute, they get to adjudicate, they get to imprison, and with a little luck, they also get to take care of the welfare of the individuals that may wind up in the system. Now, that doesn't mean that the city doesn't have some problems with this, but the lion's share of that falls under the county. <clears throat> now, you must remember that the city is the only jurisdiction, the only political jurisdiction in the United States that grows at will. States don't grow except Hawaii, and that's got a new little island coming up shortly. Other than that, all the other states don't grow. All counties can't grow unless it's an, a joint effort. If Lincoln and Minnehaha County wanted to get together, they'd have to both agree to do it. One can't do it without the other, but the city can grow at will. So therefore, the city also has a chance to get more property tax because when that portion of what was part of a county, Lincoln or Minnehaha, comes into the city, the property tax on those structures then comes to the city's coffers as well as the, the county already has been getting monies for that from property tax. Now I'm grateful that the mayor made the comments that when he was up in the oil fields that they, counties do need something in order to grow. The reason I say uh, you don't know how much um, county commissioners around the state appreciate that comment because it's not been something that's been readily held by some of the city councilors and or legislators. Uh, there was a legislator we went to who used to be a city councilor and we're trying to get some, uh, how would I say, get some assistance from the state and that particular legislature, legislator said, all you county commissioners ever do is whine. It's interesting because that person's now a county commissioner. Now, we would like, we, I'm speaking as a former county commissioner, sales tax would aid and abet the counties because that's the only growing portion of some income that would help to make the counties meet the obligations that they have. You know, deferred maintenance is not maintenance. And many of the counties in the state, whether it's Minnehaha or Lincoln, have to deal with that sort of thing. Now, if the county does not have a sustainable income other than the property tax, you are going to have the growth city that has benefit, benefited from sales tax and doing all of its things, and the county around it can't meet its obligations, then you are going to have a, 
a have and have not situation, which is one of those things that the city and the county really are joint rails on the track leading into the future. We've had too many times that we've had mayors that thought that the counties were not worth supporting. We've had those that didn't care for counties just because they just didn't care. The area of growth will only continue to grow as Sioux Falls has grown and as the county grows if there is a sustainable income for the counties. They can't exist on property tax alone and the state in its infinite wisdom has capped property taxes which means that they say counties don't know how to budget and don't know how to live on the income that they get from property tax. <coughs> so with your support, and I'm speaking for myself as a former has-been, no, I'm former and still a has-been, anyhow, we need to do something to make counties grow at the same rate because if the counties aren't going to grow and if the two counties around you are not growing with their budgets, then the city is going to be handling a lot more problems than they really want. Thank you. Commissioner Colby, thank you. Welcome. Good evening, City Council and Mr. Mayor, Rich McCorris from Sioux Falls. Uh, this evening, and my goal is not to uh, point a finger at the City Council or say you have done nothing wrong. My emotion and passion may get the best of me, but my intention this evening is not to criticize, but to try and uplift our thinking. About 12 years ago, I was at college at the University of Sioux Falls, sitting in my dorm room on a Saturday night, studying math and watching reruns of City Council meetings. I know that's a problem, but that's a different issue. Thing, as I was watching the City Council that evening, a young girl stood up to the podium, got in front and said to the City Council multiple times, you have to do something, you have to do something. It really grabbed my attention as I listened to this young girl talk. She shared the story of how she picked up a young elementary age boy by the prison who didn't have shoes and smelt like urine. Who would have thought that that one city council meeting would change my life forever? It set me on a path of entering into a new career field and trying to pursue a ministry and a service to alleviating poverty in our city. And uh, I didn't know the reality of the problem until I got more involved. About four years ago, I was heavily involved with the Sioux Falls Furniture Mission delivering furniture in Sioux Falls. Saturday morning, we dropped off some furniture, left it there. The odd thing this time, there was no parents home, just young children, all under the age 10, alone. I left not feeling so well, and I decided to return a couple of days later, take a chance. So I took a couple of bags of groceries with me and returned to that home. When I returned, the mother was home, and we tried to have a conversation. She didn't speak very good English. As we talked, it became evident that there were serious struggles in this family. I was trying to be gentle and listen to her, and I kept trying to understand, what is your job? What is your job? After much conversation, the only word she could really make out at the end is, sell myself, sell myself. Prostitution. My first thought was, how dirty? How could someone do this? But then I had kids, and I realized I would do the exact same thing if I had to put food on the table for my kids. Fast forward two weeks ago, I've been going door to door in a neighborhood where our church is mo moving into, down by the old Horner Lumber Yard, kind of a rough neighborhood area. As I visited homes, I came upon a door, a young boy came to the door, eight years old. I said, mom and dad home. No mom and dad home. A little three or four year old came kind of waddling out behind him. I left the gift that I had brought that evening, came back two days later and the mom was home. We started to converse, and I almost started to have nightmares of the same vision as before. As we conversed, she said she's a delivery person. I thought to myself, pizza delivery. What else do you deliver? We tried to talk further, and I realized she doesn't have a driver's license. How do you deliver pizza? Ends up, she's not delivering pizza. She's delivering drugs on foot. In non-politically correct terms, she's a drug mule. We have an overwhelmingly generous city, as evidenced by the strength of the annual United Way campaign, numerous service agencies in town, and the strong support for youth supports. However, we've got a serious problem. We're basically putting a Band-Aid on a bulging wound. I look at it this way. Our basement is flooding. We're calling all of our neighbors over. The neighbors are showing up and helping, but nobody seems to be looking at the window well where the water is coming in. This evening, I would ask that the City Council 
take action at some point in the near future to stop being on the defensive in the prevent mode because our prevent mode is basically preventing nothing. It's time for us to go on the offensive. I would ask that the Sioux Falls City Council consider establishing a task force, a high priority task force with it to develop a strategic plan to eradicate poverty in the city of Sioux Falls over the next 15 years. I would recommend a four prong approach, business, nonprofit, city and county. Each entity puts in $25,000 to develop a strategic plan over the next year. Sioux Falls Tomorrow has laid out some fabulous goals and has laid out some great items for us to pursue. The community development staff has done a great job of putting together action plans around affordable housing with a great amount of information. Mayor Munson's task force in 2004 laid a great foundation to fight homelessness and some great things have come for it come from it, but yet enough still has not been done. I'm not here to convince you tonight that we have a problem. I would hope that you are already aware that we have a problem. Just visit with your local county and school officials. There's too much at stake for us not to put our best and our brightest together in the same room. And I don't make this next comment as a criticism at all. I look at the event center as a great asset to our city. We tackled something and we got it done. I would say we got it done because we put our best and our brightest in the room and we had a group that was at the forefront reporting to the city council. I'm asking that we do the same for a strategic plan to eradicate poverty in our city. There's too much opportunity to capture. This is the greatest economic development opportunity for our city today. Eradicate poverty and the dollars will flow in. It's just not a humanitarian effort, our pocketbooks will benefit as well, and that should get your attention. There are kids in our city tonight who will know no different unless we go on the offensive. Tonight, between Cliff Avenue and Minnesota, and somewhere between 17th Street and Russell, drugs are being delivered on foot. Two young boys wait at home, not watching an iPad like my daughter tonight, but sitting at home waiting for their mom to return. Mr. Mayor and City Council, I don't point the finger at you. I point the finger at you and I and the rest of our city, and I ask that we would join together and put our best and brightest together. Let's do the unthinkable. Let's dream big. Let's eradicate poverty in the city of Sioux Falls. I thank you for your time and I look forward to future conversation. Thank you, Rich, very good job. Folks, would anybody else want to engage the council? Well, thank you all, it was great testimony. We appreciate it and I know the council appreciates it as well. Come on, Soda Pop, let's go. Come on, let's go, come on.